Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write the equation of a parabola given certain pieces of information, such as what is the vertex, what is the focus, and what is the directrix. However, I only give you two. We always kind of leave out one. And in reality, we don't need all three pieces of information because to write the equation of a parabola, all we really need to know is h and k, which is the vertex, so we have to figure out the vertex. And then we have to figure out what the value of p is. Now remember, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus, or opposite of p is the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So as long as we have one of those, we can figure out what the value of p is. My best practices for writing the equation of a parabola is to sketch the information. So remember, the vertex and the focus are points, and the directrix is a line. So in reality, all we're simply doing is plotting points and a line, whatever is given. So my first example, I'm just going to plot my vertex, which is at 2, negative 3. And I'm going to label it so I don't forget what I did. And then I'm going to plot the focus, which is at 2, comma, negative 5. So over 2, down negative 5. And then I'm going to plot that. Okay. Now, again, I think this is important not only to kind of see the information, but it also just helps you kind of visualize. Remember that a parabola either opens up up and down, like we did what we learned in quadratic equations, or it opens up left or right. If it's opening up or down, x is squared, and that's our equation. If it's opening left to right, y is squared, and this is the equation we're going to use. So since our vertex always opens up towards our focus, you guys can see that my parabola is going to open down. Therefore, here is going to be the equation that I'm going to use. Um, remember, h and k represent the, uh, the coordinates of your vertex, where h is the x-coordinate of the vertex, and k is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So we can see here that 2, negative 3 is our h and our k. The only other piece of information we need to figure out is what exactly is p. Well, remember, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. Well, since I graphed it, I can actually just count 1, 2. But since it's going 2 in the down, it means it's going in the negative direction. So I'm just going to write p equals negative 2 above. Now, all I'm simply going to do is plug them into my equation because I know that the parabola is opening down. So I'm just going to type in x minus h, which is 2, squared equals 4 times p, which is negative 2, times y minus uh, k, which is negative 3. OK, now all I need to do is just go ahead and simplify. So x minus 2 is just going to lay, leave like that. 2 squared equals negative 8. And then y minus a negative 3 is going to be y plus 3. Now, sometimes uh, your teacher might ask you to also put this in standard form. So to do that, um, this would be in conic section form, which is preferred. But to write in standard form, what we basically need to do is solve for our linear variable. So we need to solve for y. So to do that, in best practice, it's going to be to expand on my binomial squared, which isn't that bad because it just takes you to a perfect square trinomial which is x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then distribute my negative 8, which equals negative 8y minus 24. Now, to solve for y, all I simply need to do is add 24. And I get, let's go and switch these around. So negative 8y equals x squared minus 4x plus 28. And then we just divide by negative 8. Now, you could divide by negative 8, but since none of these are divisible by negative 8, you could reduce them. I'm just going to write that out in front and write y equals negative 1 8 times x squared minus 4x plus 28. But you could simplify that. Um, if you like to, you could divide or you could simplify all those into fractions. Um, just kind of depends on where the, where the problem is. And maybe for another one, I'll do that exactly in that same way. Um, all right, in the next one, we have the focus is 2 comma 4. Directrix is x equals negative 4. So again, the first thing we're going to want to do is plot the information. So we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the directrix is x equals negative 4. So remember, that's the x court, x axis. So x equals negative 4 is over here. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4. And remember, the directrix is a line. x always equals negative 4. So it's a nice little vertical line. Now. Actually, I meant to do this problem over here. So, yeah, well. Now, this one's a good one. Here's my directrix, and here's my focus. I'm not given my vertex. I don't know where my vertex is. 
So it kind of comes into a little issue, but I'm going to use this other problem here to help us out. If we know the distance from the vertex to the focus is p, then the distance from the vertex to the directrix is negative p, right? So what I want you guys to understand or to visualize, and that's why it's so helpful to graph these, if you look at the distance from the directrix to the focus, which we are given, where does the vertex lie? If the distance from the vertex to the director or vertex to the focus is p, and vertex to directrix is opposite of p, that means the distance from the directrix to the focus is 2p. And the vertex lies right in the middle. It's in the midpoint up there, right? So basically, my vertex is going to lie right in the middle here, which you can see is going to be at the point. I'll write that down here. Vertex is at the point negative 1, and it has to lie on that axis of symmetry. So it's going to be negative 1, comma, 2, 4. Oh, that got, that got a little confusing. And the reason why I can double check that is let's count from the vertex to the focus. 1, 2, 3. Let's count from the vertex to the directrix. 1, 2, 3. So it's right in the middle, and that's perfect. Negative direction, positive direction. Okay. Um, all right, so now, since I know what the vertex is, I can simply just count and find my value of p. And p is equal, again, it's, since my focus is to the right, it's going to be positive. So p equals 3. Now, again, we just plug it into, plug it into our equation. Now remember, since we have a vertical directrix, that means my, my axis of symmetry is horizontal. If my axis of symmetry is horizontal, that means my parabola is going to open up either left or right, right? Because this doesn't have a horizontal axis symmetry. This has a vertical axis symmetry. That's why the x was squared. So in this case, we need to use this equation. Um, I'll just plug in the information. So I have y minus my k, which is, uh, which is 4. Make sure I did that correctly. Sometimes you forget x minus h. OK. So remember, k is always with y, h is always with x. So I subtract 4 equals 4 times p, which we said was 3, times x minus h. Well, h in this case is negative 1. So x minus negative 1. OK, so now we just go ahead and simplify. This gives us y, y minus 4 squared equals 12 times x plus 1, because minus a negative is plus 1. Um, then what I need to do is, again, expand my binomial squared. So I need to multiply that out. You could use FOIL, um, but you should know it comes with perfect square trinomial. So it should be e easier to do the more you do them. And then we just apply distributive property. So I get y minus 8, oops, y squared minus 8y plus 16 equals 12x plus 12. Now, to rewrite this in standard form, I'm going to want to solve for x. So I will subtract a 12. And I'm going to go ahead and rewrite these over. So therefore, I have 12x is equal to y squared minus 8y plus 4. If you remember, one of the ways I said this is you could distribute this all the way through. And that's what I'll do for this problem. I'll just write my polynomial with fractions. We kind of prefer not to have. Um, well, actually, yeah, fractions are OK. Never mind. x equals, so 1. So remember, there's a 1 here. So 1 divided by 12 is 1 12th y squared. Uh, we have negative 8 divided by 12. You can divide a 4 into the top and the bottom. So therefore, that's going to be a negative 2 thirds y. And then 4 over 12 is going to be a 1 third plus 1 third. So that is just another way. Um, if you had a test, you know that you could see how the equation is written. All right, uh, the next one, we have a vertex is 0, comma 3. Directrix is y equals 2 thirds. So again, we want to plot the information. So I go to 0, 3. Label that as my vertex. My directrix is y equals 2 thirds. So 2 thirds. Um, hmm. All right, y equals 2 thirds. So that means I have 2, the distance from my vertex. So, so therefore, I can say opposite of p is how far is the distance? Well, it's 1, 2, and then 1 third, right? So it's 2 and 1 thirds. 
However, I don't really want to use mixed numbers. I know that negative p, if I convert that to an improper fraction, is going to be 7 thirds. But again, negative p is, that's telling me the distance from my vertex directrix. I don't want to know the uh, uh, negative p. I want to know what p is. So I divide by negative 1 on both sides. And I get p is equal to negative 7. Oh, oh yeah. Opposite of p is equal to a negative 2 and 1 third, right? Because you're going down. Sorry about that. So negative opposite of p is equal to negative 7 thirds, because that's the distance from my vertex to the directrix, which is opposite of p, which in this case is going down, so therefore that value is negative. So therefore, p is equal to 7 thirds. Gotcha. All right, um, my vertex is 0, 3. Fortunately, that was given to us. So that's h comma k. And we can see that my graph is going up and down, because since it's a um, horizontal directrix, that means my axis symmetry is vertical. So I'm going to use this equation. Uh, I'll just plug in the information again, x minus 0 squared equals 4 times 7 thirds equals y oops, what am I doing? times y uh, minus 3. All right, so this gets simplified to x squared equals 4 times 7 is 28 divided by 3. So that's going to be 28 thirds times y minus 3. Hmm. OK. Um, now, there's really nothing I need to do expanding over here, but I do need to apply distributive property. Remember that 3 is in the numerator. So therefore, when I distribute, uh, my 3's are actually going to divide out. So I have x squared equals. Uh, let's see, I have 28 third y. And then here, I'll do minus 28, because the threes will divide to 1. So now, just to solve for, uh, to solve for y, I need to add 28. And I get 28 thirds y equals x squared plus 28. Now, to solve for y, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to multiply by 3 over 28 multiply by 3 over 28. And you could do this a couple different ways. You could leave it out like I did. You could distribute it, right, and simplify. So, I mean, it really just kind of depends on what type of question or answer you're looking for. A lot of times we like to have it distributed and simplified. So here, again, my 28s will divide out. So that's plus, oops, forgot the x squared. So that's x squared plus 3. And that would be your Simplified answer if it's in standard form. A lot of times, though, we'll also just deal with our problems in our conics form. OK, last example. Now, this one's just like the first problem, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, but again, so I'll try to make sure I go through it quickly. Just remember to plot the information. By plotting the information, you save so many headaches for yourself. Here, my vertex is at 2, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Vertex. Here, my focus is at negative 2, 7. So it's obvious to see that my parabola has to open up to the left, right? Do you see in every single one of my problems, kind of, <laughs> in every single one of my problems, I show where the, I, I can figure out where the graph is opening. And that's so important because if it's vertical, I use that equation. If it's horizontal, I use this equation. And then all I need to do is plug in h and k in for my, uh, for h and k in for my vertex, or the coordinates on my vertex, as well as find the distance from my vertex to the focus, and that gives me p. So p, I can just count. How far am I going? 1, 2, 3, 4. However, I'm going in the negative direction, so p is equal to negative 4. Now, I know I have to use this equation because it's a horizontal uh, parabola, so I just plug in the information. y minus negative 7, or I'm sorry, y minus 7 squared equals 4 times p, which is negative 4, times x minus 2. Um, OK, now we just go ahead and simplify. So I get y minus 7 squared equals negative 16. Did I already do a negative 16? No, I guess I didn't. Hmm. Negative 16 times x minus 2. 
Then, to simplify my final answer, I could to write this in standard form. This is in conics form. If you, wanna, if you have to write it in standard form, then all we need to do is make some changes. So we need to expand this out to a perfect square trinomial, which will leave us with y minus 14 set y squared minus 14y plus 49 equals negative 16x plus 32. Now all we need to do is solve for 16, or solve for x. So I subtract the 32, subtract the 32. I'll just put the negative 16x on this side. Equals y squared minus 14y. That's going to be plus 17. And then I just divide by negative 16. And rather than rewriting the division as a fraction, I'm just going to leave the answer all of it. Just like that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the equation of a parabola when given the vertex, the focus, or the directrix. Thanks.